Hello YouTube, the gantry is mounted and all the belts are routed. The next section is the stealth burner install. However, things progressed quicker than expected and I did not order parts fast enough. There is supposed to be a dragon hot end on the way, but there is no tracking or email confirmation. So fingers crossed. Today, I want to discuss a likely scenario that happens when self-sourcing. Here's the fork in the road. Every part you buy has the potential to affect something else. As mentioned, I chose the Dragon Hot End. At the very beginning, PIF prints custom parts based on your choices. I just found out that there are challenges to finding the Dragon due to legal and patent issues. This also applies to some other brands, so had I known, I might have picked a different route. The hot end heaters and thermistors currently have two month delivery times on AliExpress, but they are significantly cheaper, so plan ahead and buy these parts sooner than later. FYI, you don't have to buy everything from the sourcing guide. Some of those links are dead, so I just Google search for alternatives. Here are the dim rails which I could not find locally and ended up buying online. It includes a solid state relay mount, but specifically for the Omron SSR. I don't know if it will fit in other brands, so I played it safe and bought the Omron. If you already bought a different brand that doesn't fit, you're stuck with keeping it as a spare, returning it, or buying an additional mount. By the end of the tool head assembly, I will be wiring LEDs, so let's plan electrical. Looking at the bomb, the 18 gauge wire for the AC power is straightforward. A common 10 foot wire. You will see recommendations to upgrade this to 16 gauge, but be aware that the DigiKey pins from the sourcing guide are specced for 18 gauge and smaller. Above it is a 10 foot 20 gauge wire for the hot end heater. And above that is 250 feet of 24 gauge minimum wire. And yes, you read that right. If you built a spec, there are roughly 18 wires that go from the electronics bay to tool head. This provides power and signal to the hot end, fans, heater, thermistor, extruder motor, and inductive probe. All of this is routed and secured via cable chains, which is the default method. Plan carefully before buying. Even though 22 gauge wire is listed, people have better luck cramming the smaller 24 gauge wires inside those chains. Here's the downside. Even if you use high flex PTFE wire, all that movement and rubbing can damage wires over time. A second option is to use a tool head PCB to break out the electrical connections, which allow easier servicing of the tool head. The PCB is included in many kits and is a documented option in the assembly manual. It combines the reduced number of 14 wires into a single cable, but that's still a lot of wire that could break somewhere along the run. A third option is CAN bus, which reduces the number of wires down to four, and is the same system found in cars. It may not prevent wires from snapping, but troubleshooting four wires is easier than 14 or 18. Because of this reduction, many opt to scrap the X and Y cable chains in favor of the umbilical setup. This requires relocation of mechanical end stops and printing supporting parts. These parts are not included with PIF, so unless you find and pay someone, you're stuck without a spare printer. At time of filming, CAN is relatively new, so expect to dig around for install and setup information. These are big decisions, especially if you spend time and money to route 250 feet of wire just to scrap it all later should something break, and you decide to change the setup. Unless you buy bulk, it's not easy to find PTFE wire for a reasonable price. The choices don't end here. For example, if I look at a CAN style tool head PCB, they come in one and two piece designs, each with their pros and cons. There is also a max 31865 option. What the hell is that? Well, time to Google and research. While looking things up, you will often stumble on more unfamiliar topics. Remember, I am a beginner and this series is for beginners. I am constantly learning so I don't waste money buying the wrong things or stuff already included somewhere else. Example, this BAT85 diode I already bought is actually included on some tool head PCBs. I did not know that until now. Those boards may also include the AED XL345 accelerometer used for input shaping. That piece is usually bought separately when following the bomb. 
Going back to my custom sourcing sheet, I have bought everything highlighted orange. I did not buy the octopus controller or drivers yet. Amazon only has 30 day returns should something be defective. Hint, watch out for additional hardware. The stealth burner tab has some bolt sizes not included in the main bomb. PCB boards usually require their own connectors and so on. If you bought extra fasteners in the beginning, you are in luck if it's used somewhere else in the build. People will say to just build a stock Voron and get it running. Well, it's hard to determine what that really means to different people. If you have experienced wires snapping inside the cable chains, your idea of a stock Voron probably has CAN bus. If you went through several inductive probes, your stock machine likely includes the clicky probe. If your micro switches somehow went bad, you might refuse anything but hall effect end stops. I still haven't decided on the wiring setup because there is no absolute winning scenario without some compromise. Figuring out the unknown has taken more time than actually building the printer. I personally find it much more fun building than reading. The information is out there, but having to dig around for every single little bit of information sucks. That's just the nature of open source and tough luck, because when you don't read or follow directions, shit happens. And that's where this project will get you, any lack of attention to detail. Nothing so far has been complicated to build. The frame, for example, was one of the easiest things to put together. But if you flipped it wrong, didn't square it, kept building, and just found out now, you are in for a world of hurt. Look at everything that needs to be removed and redone. While not difficult, it just wastes time. Speaking of which, I am well over the 40 hour assembly time commonly thrown out there. But this includes research, filming, editing, etc. What I do like is the opportunity to learn new things. I now know what bearings do. The difference between an idler and drive pulley. Differences between PT100 and PT1000 thermistors things that I took for granted before. So if you are on the fence about doing this project, just go for it. If you want to, you can do it. There's your motivation. Please share your own experiences, agreements, and disagreements in the comments. I cannot cover every option out there, there's just too many. In the next video, I plan to start the tool head assembly once those parts arrive. Thank you for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe and see you all next time.